Hi, um, so in this demo, I wanted to show the use of uh, boundary events and uh, the ability to uh, trigger a backend service and um, from one coach view and update data in another coach view. So very simple example here. So let's say you had a drop down box uh, where you were selecting from a list of customers and you had a secondary coach, a second coach view where you were displaying details of those customers. So for example, uh, this is the first coach view, uh, which is just a drop down box and that uh, shows my list of customers. And if I were to, um, uh, and as I select from this list, um, this coach secondary second coach view uh, here gets updated uh, with the with the customer details. So the really the concept here is to uh, be able to react uh, to changes in data in one coach view and um, then update the second coach view. And in this case with the boundary event, uh, we can move it back to the server side, call a server side uh, service um, and um, get the data that uh, will be used to refresh this coach, uh, coach view. So a quick look at how this is accomplished. Um, so essentially, you, we have two coach views. This is this is the first coach view, which is the customer uh, lookup coach view that has been configured to fire a boundary event. Well, this is the second coach view, which just uh, displays the customer details. And that's uh, bound to a customer uh, uh, info object. So let's take a look at this uh, customer lookup coach view. So uh, in here, uh, the important thing. Uh, so now this, of course, uh, given that it's a, a select box, uh, the variable that's bound to it is a list, uh, which means it's a complex uh, variable. And what that means is to be able to react to changes uh, in, in this data, specifically in the list selected portion of, uh, of the data, you can't just uh, put some code in the, uh, in the change uh, event of the coach view because uh, that's almost of no use. Uh, the change event uh, of a co coach view, uh, it does not get invoked uh, for changes uh, in a, uh, within a complex object. It will react only if the reference to that complex object was changed. Um, so the way to do this is um, to bind uh, to the actual um, data and the part of the data that we want changed. So in this case, um, customer name list uh, is uh, is the is the com is the complex data object that is bound to the coach view, and and this is how you get access um, to uh, to that um, uh, complex object. Uh, once uh, you have that, you have to use the bind method uh, to bind to the appropriate property that uh, you want to react to. Uh, when it's changed. So in this case, um, uh, the method, the callback method that is call, called is uh, is called value changed and uh, all this method is doing is invoking the trigger method which is uh, going to uh, invoke the boundary event. So in this case, um, you bind to the list selected uh, index property of the customer name list co complex object and you attach this callback method value changed uh, as the callback method uh, whenever the list selected index of the customer name list uh, object uh, is changed. And what the value changed method does is just called this dot context or trigger. And, um, Along with this, one other piece of con configuration is uh, you have to select that it can fire a boundary event. So once you do that, uh, select this and, and then use uh, this dot context or trigger, you can programmatically fire uh, a boundary event at any time, which will cause the flow to come back uh, to the server side. Unload here is just to clear any resources. Um, the other thing uh, to note is, um, just the way this uh, 
uh, coach uh, is designed you can see that it has two coach views in it and remember the first coach view can fire a boundary event which is wired to a uh, to a service that actually returns um, that gets the customer name that was selected and and returns the customer info which is then displayed in the second coach view so once again this is this is the uh, the coach view that fires the boundary event and this is a coach view that uh, displays data uh, based on a back-end service that returns the data that's bound to that second second coach view. So um, I hope that was clear and um, and showing the behavior once again. This is your first coach view, and as you select, uh, the data changes. So I'm selecting. My customer here in the first coach view and that's causing boundary event to be fired I go get more of the customer details and then I display it here in my second coach view thank you